Hi guys, this is Miss Karen from Seton Hill in New Kensington. Um, I wanted to take today's time to talk about shapes. Da, 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 da. Also, I'm sorry in advance, it's fire safety like month. So there's a man here checking our fire alarms to make sure they work as they should. So it might go off. If it does and it goes too long, I might stop this. But if it doesn't, we'll keep it rolling. Anyway, I wanna start off with a game. I drew a bunch of different shapes in here. You guys can do this at home too. All you need is any kind of paper, um, some markers or crayons, even pencils. Probably more crayons though, those are more fun. And just draw a bunch of different shapes. Make some rectangles or some triangles, some squares, circles, whatever your heart desires. And then we're gonna see if we can find all the different shapes and we're gonna make them matching colors. So I'm gonna take my orange marker and I'm gonna to try to find all of the, let's see, let's start with circles. So we're gonna color in all the circles. Find all the circles on your page. So I see one right here. Good color, 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 color. One orange circle. Are there any other circles here? Is this a circle? No, that's not a circle. What about, hmm. Well, I knew that one was a circle, so I gotta find something that looks like that. Oh, here's one. Circle, 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 circle. So now we have two circles. One, two. Hmm. Are there any other circles I'm missing? I must be done if I can't find any other ones, right? You should always double check yourself just in case. Always check your work. There's another one I missed. Good thing I went back to double check. Whew. All right. So how many circles do we have now? One, two, three. Three circles. And I think that's actually it this time since I went back to double check. So I'm gonna put my orange marker down and let's see, I'm gonna pick my purple marker next. And I'm gonna look for, let's see, I'm gonna just randomly point to one, a square. Okay, I'm gonna look for all the squares on my board. So I know that one's a square, gonna color it in. It doesn't have to be super pretty. As long as you know it's a square. So far we have one square. I see another square way hiding up here in the corner. Color in that one. That's two squares. Oh, here's a third one. I had three circles and I must just have three squares, right? I shouldn't have to look anymore. I should probably double check. Always double check your work. squares. Oh, we found one. Let's get this little guy filled in so we can match his friends. Purple squares, purple squares all on my board. All right. I think that's it this time because I double checked my work. So I'm going to put my purple marker down. Let's count how many purple squares we have now. One, two, three, four four squares and three circles. So we have one more square than we do circles. All right, let's get our pink, you know, whatever color you want. I, I'd want to use pink. I'm gonna look for hmm, diamonds, or sometimes people call them rhombuses. They're both the same, whatever you want to call it. So this is a diamond up here. Sort of looks like a funky squished square, kind of like sideways. Here's another diamond. Da, 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 da. Can you find any more diamonds on our board? What about on your board? Or on your paper or whatever you use to color yours? I see another one right here. And I'm gonna double check my work to make sure. Found another one. All right, I think 
that's it. Let's count them. One, two, three, four. Four diamonds, which is the same as our four squares. That's equal, same. And we still had three circles. So there's still more diamonds and squares. Let's see, we're gonna put pink down, get a new color. We'll do some blue this time. And this time I'm gonna find some triangles. If you had to guess before I colored them in, how many triangles are on this board? What do you think it would be? I have a guess in my brain. What do you think it is? Well, let's find out. This one's definitely a triangle. Definitely gotta make that one blue. And here's another one. That's two so far. Another big old triangle. Oh, here's another one. So, so far we have four triangles. One, two, three, four. Am I all done? I don't know, we gotta double check our work, right? Always double check. Jump in, that's a rectangle, rectangle. What is this shape? It doesn't look like this one. Hmm. Well, we know triangles have three sides and three corners. One corner, two corners, corners and one side, two sides, three sides. Hmm. All of these have one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, but so does this. One, two, three. Makes it a triangle, right? Three corners and one, two, three sides. So we can fill that one in too. Doesn't look like the other triangles but it still makes the same thing as the other ones do. Are there any other triangles that are trying to trick us? What do you guys think? Another one hiding. Oh, I see this little guy. He's hiding in the corner. We'll color him in. Don't you try to run from me, little guy. All right. We were double checking. I think we got them all. So how many do we have now? A lot of them, right? One, two, Three, four, five, six triangles. I have to use two hands to do that. Six triangles. Whew. That's a lot. That's the most we've seen so far. And I have brown for my last color. And now we're gonna look for what? What's left? Rectangles. We're gonna fill in our rectangles with brown. It's not a very good color though. It's not showing up very well. Yeah, you guys can see it though, I think. It'll be a-okay. There's that one and our last one. So far we have one, two, three rectangles. I'm gonna double check my work to make sure. Double check in, double check in. There's no more left, so we found them all. Do you remember how many circles we had? One, two, three circles, right? How many triangles did we have? We had a lot of those. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six triangles. How many diamonds or rhombuses? It'd be fine, they were pink. One, two, three, four. How many squares? One, two, three, four. Nice job. Now that you have your own and you're probably doing along with me, how many squares and rectangles, triangles, whatever shapes you had, it's nice to do a tally sheet too. So you could take a piece of paper and I'll tape this up here. So I'm gonna change my marker out so you can see it a little better. Tally sheet helps you. It's kind of like what you'd use for a game or like football has scores down here. So 
this will title shapes. The big lines we know, shapes. Sorry, you can't really read that that much. I'll have to bring it closer. So triangles are a shape. A triangle. And that's this shape. I'm gonna bring it closer so you guys can see. Because it's not fun if I have to do it by myself. Triangle. And we also had rectangles. Write that down. You can write the word or you can draw the shape. I like writing the word and drawing the shape so I can remember. We have circles. C I R C L E. And that is a round shape. And we also have diamonds. I like calling them diamonds. That's what I learned when I was little, so it makes it easier for me to remember. Did I forget any? I think I forgot one. The purple one, the square. Can't forget the square, just like Spookly in our other story. He was a square pumpkin. We don't want to forget about the square. All right, so we have our list. Triangle, rectangle, circle, diamond, square. I'm gonna draw a little line here so I can keep track of them. And we said we had six triangles, so we would put tally marks, which is one, two, oh, you can't see my first mark. One, two, three, four, four, five, six, Six tally marks. How many rectangles do we have? One, two, three of them. So we have to put one, two, three. How many circles did we have? One, two, three. So we put three tallies on circle. One, two, three. And diamonds. One, two, three four diamonds. So we put one line, two, three, four. And our last one, without forgetting it, is a square. One, two, three, four squares. This is where tallying is fun, because this shows you, and you can compare how many of each shape there were, which one you had the most of, which one you had the least of. So if you had to look on this tally sheet, which one did we have more shapes of? Which one had the most? All right, triangle had the most. They had how many? Six. And if sometimes you can't really tell by looking, you can always count the lines. One, two, three, four, five, six. Which ones had the least? This one's tricky because it's actually a tie. If you said rectangle and circle, you're right. They had the least. They both had one, two, three. And diamond and square right in the middle with four. You can use tally sheets on almost anything. Seeing how tall people are, what their favorite color is, their eye color, their favorite animal, anything. If you wanna tally it and be able to compare them, you can probably tally it. So next, you probably had somebody draw your little shape for, for you, but now we're gonna practice drawing the shapes. So if we were going to draw a triangle, I'm gonna take my paper. Triangles, like we said, have three sides and three corners. So you'll draw a line on, this is gonna be interesting, the bottom, make one bottom line. You draw a kind of slanty line up a little and then you meet this corner to this corner. And that's a triangle. And if you wanted to draw a rectangle, you draw a really long line and then another really long line above it. So you got a bunch of space. And then you connect both those lines. And you made a rectangle. Next we can make, let's see, how about we make a square now? 
Squares are almost like rectangles, but they're they're kind of they have four equal sides instead of one two being longer. So this one will have a short bottom and a short top and a short side and a short side to make it a square. Next, we're gonna do um let's do a diamond next. Diamonds are kind of tricky. So you kind of start making a triangle, you do an up and a down, but then you have to go down and then up, kind of like going in reverse to make a diamond. And what is left on our board? Hmm. Circles, right? Circles don't have any edges or any corners, so they're easy. You just go and make a circle. Some people like that because it also looks like the letter O and sometimes people have that in their name. Now that you drew your shapes, you can start to cut them out. We gotta practice our safe scissors. I don't have my little scissors right now, so I'm gonna use my adult scissors to show you, but they're shaped the same. So you'll take your thumb, stick it in the little hole, and stick your fingers in the big hole. It makes it so you can do this. Ooh. And if you have the scissors with the little uh, bit in the middle, you can push that down, it helps you Yep, and if not, you can leave it closed. One of your cutting, usually you cut down on the table, kind of low, kind of down here, but I'm gonna hold it up so we can look at our beautiful board and cut at the same time. So when you're cutting a circle out, you wanna do real slow snips, just like this, boop, boop. So you get the whole way around. Do, 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 cutting, 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 cutting. Doing some snips, cutting some stuff. You know I like singing while I'm doing crafts. And look at that. Circle's cut out. And if you hold this all together, you got a circle in your paper left too. <laughs> all right. Next, we'll cut out our diamond. You know, you could cut out whatever order you want, honestly. I'm kind of just... Picking up whatever paper. Sometimes cutting diamonds are easier because you can just go zip and it's done. And zip and it's done. Diamond. And if you put your paper together, diamond. Next is our square. This one's an easy one too. You cut slow and steady up. I like doing one big quick snip. Whoop. And another one. Whoop. And one more. There's our square. And like I said, there's a square left in the paper. We have our rectangle. Cut up, 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 up. And you gotta cut the long way. It's easier for me, if you might have noticed, I didn't think to mention it. I turn the paper when I'm cutting. Instead of turning my scissors, because that can sometimes be dangerous, I turn the paper so I don't have to move my scissors. You'll see my scissors always stay in the same place. Makes them easier to hold. So there's our rectangle and our rectangle. And last but not least, our triangle. This one, I kind of start sideways. So I'll turn in my paper so it'll match my scissors. Keep turning. Sometimes you drop your paper and that's okay. Makes it safer so you don't hurt yourself with your scissors. There's our triangle. And there's our whoop, other triangle. That's how you know you did a super good job when you got two things. You could almost put this back in here and you wouldn't even know. <laughs> All right, really good job cutting out those triangles and rectangles. If you even want to, you could take the ones that you cut out and try to match them up with the ones that are on your paper that you did your little shape hunt on. I, have, I did some pretty good cutting. A lot of my shapes match up almost exactly with what was already there. There's my diamond, let's see, where's the diamond? There it is, and my square. We nailed it. Good job. 
All right, this is where tricky stuff comes in. So there's also things called 3D shapes. That's what I wrote here, 3D. So when something is on paper, like when we made these, they're called 2D shapes because you can't see the shape this way. Okay. So when it's a 3D shape, so what would you say this is? This is a square, right? But if you have a 3D square, it turns into this. You might remember it from our book. See, they match square. My square is a little bit funkier because I cut it out, but they're the same shape. But this is 3D. That means it's tall and it's wide. And it also has something called depth. That's a big word. It means how deep it goes, kind of like the ocean how deep something goes. So if you have this, it's a 3D square called a cube. And if you have your packet, there's also a nice little fancy list of all the shapes here. So right now we were talking about the cube. That's what this looks like, the cube. We also have other cubes in our classroom like this. This is called a counting cube. It's pretty cool. Usually 3D shapes are something you can really hold in your hand and you can feel all the different sides of. Like this is what somebody would say is a circle, like this, that's a circle. But when you have a 3D circle, it's called a sphere. That's what it looks like right, right there. A lot of people think that um, they would just be called balls, but they're not. Balls are actually spheres. So if you're out playing in the yard with a basketball, that's a sphere. It's pretty cool. Let's see, what other things do we have? There's also cones, which are sort of like triangles. Here's my, my cone at school. We have a lot of these really cool magnet builders that go together that are awesome for building 3D shapes. A cube and a cone. <laughs> We also have something called a cylinder, which if you look at something in your house, could be like a can, like a soup can. Or at school, we have these cool sensory bottles where if you shake them up, the red and the blue make purple. I always love these. But this is a cylinder. It's round on all the sides, but it's flat on top. So if you look at it this way, it looks like a circle. But if you look at the whole thing, a cylinder. Your Play-Doh from your take-home kits is also a cylinder. See it's a circle on the bottom, but it's a cylinder the whole way around. We also have another magnet that is a cylinder too. This is a tricky one. So there's something called, or it's a big word, rectangular prism. Some people also call them, I believe, cuboids, but I've, I've never called them that. Rectangular prisms are rectangles, but 3D. So like my classroom phone is shaped like a rectangle. Boop, boop, boop. Ta-da. But it's 3D, so it's got all the sides. It makes it tall and deep and wide. We also have a really cool bug building game that's also made of rectangular prisms, which is super neat. There's also other ones on there, but I don't really have very good examples of them in school. There's triangular prisms. There's hexagonal prisms, which is a super big word. So a hexagon has six sides. One, two, three, four, five, six. We also have rectangular prisms and triangular prisms. So this one's kind of an example of a triangular prism. I put, I took all of my magnet tiles, so I took a bunch of triangles and I put them all together to make a triangular prism. It's 3D, so we can see it being tall, see it being wide, ooh, sorry, wide, and it goes deep too. If it was just flat like this, that's just a triangle. But all together, it's a rectangular prism. Same with our other magnet tiles. I always love bringing up magnet tiles because all of us friends of school love these things. Just a square, an ordinary little square. 
But if you get six of them and put them all together, ooh, it's not a square anymore, it's a cube. So cool how math works and shapes. Shapes are so cool. Can you find any of those shapes in your house? You don't always need a specific toy. You, like I said, you could go into your kitchen and find a cylinder soup can, or you could go into your backyard and find a basketball or a sphere. How many 3D shapes can you find in your house? Um, if you find any, you could send me a message on Dojo. You could even leave comments on the video if you wanted to. Uh, let me know. I'd love to hear all the different shapes you guys find. Thanks. Good luck.